inside of our shopping list page, let's create a shopping list reference. And we can add a dollar because we are going to be making this of type Firebase list observable. So if you remember how to import a Firebase list observable, go ahead and do that now. And as you can see, that's from Angular Fire 2 slash database. So we can say our reference is type of Firebase list observable. And then you also have to make it of type something. And that something is a shopping item. But do remember that it's actually a list of shopping items. So if it's a list of shopping items, then it has to be an array. So now we need to import our list of shopping items. And that can be done by importing it from our models. So that's simply importing that shopping item interface. With that said and done, the next thing to do is import our Angular Fire database once again. So that can be done by saying private database. And that is then of type Angular Fire database. And we can pull that from Angular Fire 2 slash database. So all we need to do is add this to the current list of imports. And from here, we have quite a simple job because all we need to now say is that our shopping list reference can be pointed at the database dot list. And then if you remember the reference from before, that reference is the shopping list. So essentially what we're saying at this point is that we're pointing the shopping list reference at Firebase and then of course that shopping list node. That means not only can we push things from this reference to the database, but also we have access to everything inside of that node. So if we think of this as almost like a lens directly into this piece of data, we're saying if I this, hey, I want everything inside of this node. I want to be able to add things. I want to be able to remove things. So it acts almost as if it's there inside of the client. And essentially it is directly there in the client. But what you have to do with every observable is observables are lazy. So nothing happens with this observable right now until we subscribe to it. So even though we've done this, we essentially have nothing. So we'd need to subscribe to our reference and that can be done by hitting up our reference and saying subscribe. We then have the data in which we could log out to the console. So if we logged out X, we could see the results of the shopping list. But when displaying data like this, there is a better way to do that. So let's remove that for now. And we can head over to our shopping list.html. So this is the view. And once again, we have quite an easy time. And that's inside of our ion content. What we need to do is essentially make an ion list. And this allows us to have a list of ion items. So we can have ion item. And in order to make a list, we can use something called ng4. And this is a structural directive inside of Angular. And it allows us to repeat these elements for however many items there are inside of the array. So we can say let item of shopping list reference. And currently, because this is an observable, we need to pass the async pipe. So let's make this pipe here and type async afterwards. What this does is it allows Angular to handle all of the unwrapping and subscribing and unsubscribing of our observable. And instead we get the data back like in normal array. Because if we didn't use the async pipe, this wouldn't work. So now that we have that, it's essentially going to repeat this item for however many items we have inside of our shopping list. So let's simply start off with a H2 and we can simply say item dot item name. And what we can do here is say item name is equal to, and we can pass in that template. 
And we can do the same thing with a H3 with a mount. And we can do that item dot item number. So let me just make a quick comment on this. Essentially, it's going to repeat the ion item for as many items that we have inside of our shopping list. So that's all we need to do. If we save our file, already we can see now that we have this item name of pizza and item name of cheesecake inside of our application. So let's put this through the ultimate test. If we click our plus button and we add something to the item name, let's add something like ice cream. And maybe we want 10 ice cream. And if we hit add item, instantly you can see that we have the ice cream added to our list. And this is also persisted to our database. And what the magic of this is, is that there's next to no codes. The only thing that we have to display our code is simply this ng4 over the ion item. And inside of our shopping list page, we're simply pointing the reference at the shopping list node. Inside of our add shopping.ts, we are simply using the dot push on the reference. And that acts as a standard array, essentially. It's just a similar thing. We're just simply adding an item to the array. And all of the rest is handled for us by the Angular Fire SDK. And the even better thing about this is I'm actually going to change some of the data on a separate computer. So I'm going to change this ice cream to instead be chicken. Now, one of the awesome things about Firebase is that if I update the data, perhaps from a different machine, if I type in something here like chicken, and this is on an entirely different machine, and if I type that into Firebase and I hit enter right now, you'll see that it gets updated instantly on our application. We don't have to refresh. We don't have to do anything to get the data back. It's simply updated on all of our clients at once. This is the power of Firebase. And especially this type of ease of use is what makes it so popular in the development world. Let's take a look at removing an item from the list.